If you play League or Counter-Strike or any big PC esports title, then you might recall the Osu craze that swept several communities a few years ago. Osu is one of the most popular rhythm games in the world. It basically maps clickable and draggable buttons to a song's beat and then puts the button map over any kind of moe background. You know, to lure in the weeaboos. Osu got an extra bump in popularity because it was rumored to improve your reaction times in other games, and reaction times are a big deal in the gaming world. That's because many people think that reaction times are to gaming are what height is to basketball and what reach is to boxing and so on. People think that reaction time is one single physical gatekeeper between the born to be pro and then the forever amateur. But just like playing Osu won't make you any better at any other game than Osu, your reflexes don't determine your skill level. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get better reacting. And to do that, we have to talk about reaction times. Of course, we also gotta talk about ProGuides.com. Smash is so much more than just reacting, and ProGuides has got you covered with courses, tips, and help from many other areas of the game. And before we dive into reaction times, we wanna hear all about the other OSU tactics out there. Have you done anything outside of Smash to try to improve your in-game skill? Tell us your secret strats down there in the comment section, and no matter how embarrassing it may be, we will not judge you. When we think of reaction times, we think about what we learned in health class as a kid. We think about stuff like the ruler test, or when someone says think fast and throw something in your way. But those are just simple reflexes. Basically, your brain has a very simple thing to respond to and a single response to carry out. You grab the ruler or catch the basketball. In Smash, you're rarely put in that basic type of scenario. Normally, you've got a myriad of things to respond to and even more ways you could deal with them. So, how well did you do on the ruler test didn't really matter. In fact, top 10 players Mars tweeted that one of his reaction times was 251 milliseconds and his girlfriend was 210. Mars' reaction time is almost the exact same as the average reaction time, 250 milliseconds. The reaction time gap between Mars and the average person doesn't matter nearly as much as experience, knowledge, and practice gap. According to SSB Wiki, Mars' first recorded tournament was in April 2013, so he's been playing Smash competitively for over 7 years now. Quick reflexes aren't everything in Smash, but they aren't nothing either. The utility of reaction really depends on the game's engine. In Smash 4, it's true that there was less room for reaction-based punishes because moves had less hit and shield stun. In Melee, there's much more room for reaction-based punishes because there are so many quick aggressive options. <laughs> Ultimate is the game where Nintendo tried harder to reconcile elements of Melee and the new Smash titles. The result is a game where you have a lot more reaction-based punishes than you used to. For example, we now know that players physically can react to rolling, getting up, and get up attacking from the ledge. This is because there are enough frames between the very first visual cue and the end of the move for a player's sprint to 1, respond, 2, call for an input, and 3, for the input to go through the buffer window and start up. However, these reactions are so hard to do unprepared and raw. Krom might be a master's delight of a character, but only a well-practiced Krom will punish a normal get up on reaction, and that's for several reasons. First, the crawl main will need to learn what moves are actually fast enough to catch the getup. Learning that will take some trial and error. Second, a crawl main will need to learn the visual cue. That's the very first frame of a getup animation. If the crawl responds to the end of a getup, the opponent has time to shield. Third, they need to train that interaction to build muscle memory. And that leads us to what we can do to get better at reacting. First, you need to learn what tools are fast enough to work on reaction. Krom's jab starts up on frame 5. Now in isolation, that's not really a big deal. After all, the move only does 6.5% totally fresh. But at high percents, Krom's jab can lead to a back air, making for one of the best kill confirms in the game. So, for the full response, you don't just have to learn the jab. You have to learn reversal aerial rush after, and then back air after that. That's pretty mechanically intensive, and it's going to take some time to practice to get down. Krom's jab isn't a catch-all option either. If the opponent isn't in percent range for a good follow-up, jab might not be as good option as a simple forward tilt. Since Krom has good ground and air mobility, he also has a wider range of options to choose from. That means a big part of reacting is knowledge, not just physical skill. You have to know what to do next in a lot of scenarios. And you build that knowledge through a mix of practice and study. If you don't know what to do, you may react to the opponent's option, but with the move that's just too slow to land. This logic applies to offense and defense. You'll need to know what moves you can catch on a roll as well as what moves can punish a hit on a shield. That means learning matchups as well. It's one thing to know that Game & Watch's up special out of shield is good, it's another thing to know that his neutral air is also fast and can lead to bigger punishes in the right scenarios. Meister is the only Game & Watch in the top 50 in part because he knows the character's optimal punishes. Now for part 2 of improving your reaction to the game, learning the visual cue. 
That might sound easy right now, but the trick is that the best cues come at the start of the move and not at the end. If you react to a move at the end of the animation, you have a lot less time to punish, and every millisecond is crucial to a reaction-based punish. The human brain just can't react in really tight timing windows, so you give yourself a much better shot if you can catch the earliest part of the input. The tricky part of this is that the start of the animation is usually much less noticeable than the middle or the end. The very first frames tend to show a character's positioning to swing a blade or throw a punch. That initial position isn't as visually dynamic as the slash or the punch itself. This is extra true for certain characters, like Game & Watch. Game & Watch's animations are meant to be less developed and smooth to emulate that retro feel. The unintended side effect is that it's much more harder to distinguish between his startup animations. Therefore, it's hard to react to his moves. And that's hardly just the case for Game & Watch. Lots of characters have deceptive hitboxes and animations, so responding to the initial cues can take some serious matchup practice. It takes keeping a close eye on the opponent. Literally. It's almost good to watch your opponents more than your own character, but even this skill can take a lot of games to develop. You've got to feel pretty comfortable with your movement and your inputs. On top of that, when you respond to the very first frames of a startup, there's more chance that you respond too quickly. Normally, if we react poorly, that means that we respond too slowly and whip the punish. Respond too quickly and you might run into a hitbox. It's easy to get discouraged because you might just charge into a forward smash like an idiot instead of getting an epic punish, but charging into smash attacks like an idiot can be a good thing. If you're learning from it and it's in a low stakes match, then it could net a positive. This is called testing your limits, or just losing a lot. After gradual repetition and reviewing your own matches, you can spot what you did wrong and adjust your timing. Once you make those adjustments, you should notice an improvement in both your ability to react and the strength of your reactions. Since there are a lot of scenarios in Ultimate, this will add up to a lot of practice. So start off by practicing common scenarios for your character, then work towards the less common ones. Meister wants to play, you know, he helps Meister a lot, and right here, there it is, Meister! In the end, the way we get better at reacting is the way you get better at most stuff. Study, practice, and pay attention. That's usually the best way to improve. But hey, don't we all just want a cheesy life hack every now and then? Oh my god! It no is! for Pete, just defeat! Mars is going to take Genesis 7! Before you round out this video, let's talk about a few ways you can hack your reaction time. These aren't going to matter as much as practice, but they're fun and pretty simple. First off, try to react to the sound and feel, not just the visuals. Current scientific research shows that humans respond faster to sound and touch than visuals. If a move has a loud audio cue that occurs right on the startup, then you might be able to react more quickly if you listen. For touch feedback, you might have to turn on rumble. This is going to be a big decision because your controller is going to be shaking a lot. Second, take care of yourself. We say this a lot, but it's only because it's important. Contemporary science shows that your body and mind do better nearly at everything when you sleep well, eat well, and exercise about 30 minutes a day. Third, meditate. Meditation needs more research, but one study of 45 participants found that meditation lowered reaction time and increased alertness. Keep in mind that participants had to work for it. They did consistent, directed meditation for 12 weeks. No spontaneous enlightenment here. Fourth, use your non-dominant hand. If you use your non-dominant hand for day-to-day -day tasks like brushing your teeth, you push your brain to create more neural pathways. Those neural pathways can go on to improve some quick reactions. The only downside is if you're ambidextrous, which unfortunately I am. And that about wraps up reaction times. If you want more information about how reflexes work, then we'll link some of our sources in the description. There's a lot of good information there, so let's check it out. There's some good information on ProGuys.com as well, so don't miss out on that either. Hit the bell, type in the URL, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.